With egg season upon us, I thought I'd take you guys through how to set up an incubation tub for your eggs. That's right, because this is what's happening here at my place, and I'm sure this is what's happening at your place too. Eggs are falling everywhere. So I want to make sure that you are prepared for the eggs that are coming. How are we going to set up an incubation tub? Well, it's very simple. Now, remember we did talk about how to set up a lay box. Now, the lay box itself, we've used vermiculite in, and we've made it moist enough. So basically, you've got to add enough moisture. So it's usually by weight, equal weight to water. And therefore, you should be able to squeeze the vermiculite, and it should be able to hold its shape and break up. Look at that, that's perfect. So that's a perfect blend. So basically, that's what I do to set up for the lay box. Put it in the cage, the females, as you see, will get in there, they lay their eggs. Now, we can either leave the female on the eggs and let her maternal incubate, that's right, she can do the whole job. So if you get caught out and you're not prepared, you don't have an incubator, don't worry. We can set up this box just like this and leave the female there for the whole period of time and she'll do the job. She'll look after those eggs and she'll incubate them. She'll, grow. she'll basically make, maintain the moisture level. She'll crawl out, go in the water bowl, have a nice big drink, go back in, sit around the eggs. She'll keep those eggs nice and warm and when she needs to, she'll actually release the coils and allow a little bit of ventilation around them and be able to cool those eggs down because mother knows best and basically mother nature knows better. So if you really want to take them out and you want to incubate them, there's multiple different ways we can do that. Now number one, the lay box. Remember we said the lay box, we set that up so that if we did get caught out, we could use this actual box to go in the incubator. Now these particular tubs, I got these because they've got a nice flexible lid. The lids can go on nice and easy. And obviously it's a lunch box. You know, I use these for my hatchling snakes, so the tubs themselves I use. The lids, not so often. But what we can do with the lid, and we can basically turn this into a quick incubation tub. Now, with the lid, it's, it's a very old technique. It's one of the first techniques I learned when I started keeping snakes, was how to build a very quick incubation box. So basically, you could use anything with a lid, basically, including ice cream containers, it used to be the big fave, because once you finish the ice cream, what are you going to do with the container? Throw it out? No, let's use it. So I'm just going to move this girl out of the way. And what we need, so the lids themselves, what do we need to do? Well, I used to like cutting holes out of the lids. So here's one I've already started. So basically what we're going to do is basically cut the center out. And for this reason, I use tin snips. They're nice, quick and easy. If you use a pair of scissors, it can be a little bit difficult at times. But this process, you know, for an old roofer, shouldn't take too long at all. So what we want to do is we want to cut it out so we've got a window, right? A nice little picture frame window. But we can't use an in this in an incubator like this. So what next thing we need to do, grab the old cling wrap. Now the cling wrap needs to put on top like this. Put the lid on top. Lock it in, nice, quick and simple. It's a bit brutal here, but it's got the job done. Tear off the cling wrap, and there we are. So now we've contained the moisture inside. But the extra bonus of using cling wrap is that as the egg starts to mature through that period of time, they start to absorb oxygen through, this, through the shell itself. And there's a bit of oxygen and gas exchange going on. So basically they, re they, they release a little bit of CO2 and they need to draw in oxygen. Now, you can do all sorts of things. I've seen people put holes in lids. And I mean, in the good old days when these used to sweat up, you knew that the moisture level was right. You could crack the corner of the container. We used to fan it just like this. That allows that big oxygen intake in there and allows the CO2 to draw out. And um, that used to be just the most basic incubation setup tub in the universe. And I mean, if you guys are stuck at home, that is the easiest way in the world. Now, vermiculite itself, in the old days, it used to get a really bad rap because it used to have a lot of bacteria or you used to get a bit of uh, algae breakouts or moles and stuff like that. That's because the vermiculite that we use in Australia typically is for, you know, for hydroponics, so for plants. So in that instance, it's not an issue, but if you want to use it and you're not too sure about it and you're worried about getting a mold outbreak, Chuck it in the oven, put it, put it in a little pan, throw it in the oven at 100 degrees Celsius for about 45 minutes, 
that's going to dry it out and it's going to kill any moulds at all. Then you obviously let it cool down, then you can add your moisture and do all the rest. Now that's the quickest, easiest, simplest way to do your homemade incubation tub. Any tub can be used, it's up to you. Now, we all know I love these guys, the sim tubs. Now the reason why I love the sim tubs is because it allows me to put my medium in the bottom, whichever one I choose, and it gives me this little grate where it can suspend the eggs above the medium. Now what does that mean, medium? Well we can have multiple different choices of mediums. So very basic is water. So we're using water in the bottom. Now any water that we use, we can boil it. When you boil water, it's going to sterilize the water, let it cool down again, and then we can use it. Even in with the vermiculite, that's right. So water, we can use water. So straight water is a great, great medium for incubation. Uh, another technique is a sponge, which is a little bit weird, right? You've got a bit of water in there, you've got sponge in there, the sponge absorbs the water, but also releases enough moisture in the container once the lid's on to be able to keep those eggs really, really hydrated. Another technique which everyone loves is the water crystals. It produces this nice gelatinous mass, look at that. So you've got three here, so you've just got water, sponge and water, water and water crystals that turns into this jelly-like mass, and um, we can keep going. Here's another one, vermiculite, old vermiculite. That's right, you can use the suspended bed for, with vermiculite and with perlite, so we can use both methods. And a lot of people do use these methods. And um, people even go to the next extreme where they use vermiculite and pour a bit of perlite on top and then use that as well. But um, these two methods, we can actually remove the grates and we can place the eggs directly on these two substrates here. Now, water method's great, but a lot of people are worried about it slushing around like this. My question is, why are you walking around with the house with the eggs, taking them for a walk? They don't need to go anywhere. Once you've got them, you should be able to put them on the shelf and let them go, let them do the whole turn. These two methods people like because it takes away that big slushy sort of technique. And of course, you know, when you're, when you're slushing them around, you're obviously risking the fact that the embryo is going to twist and drown inside the egg and cause all sorts of issues. Now, like I said, these two you can use just like this. Now, if you don't want to go to the expense, and I know there's a big problem in Australia, getting these sim tubs, the availability has always been an issue, and usually the price puts a lot of people off. So, you don't have to use expensive tubs, you don't have to go to this extreme. What we can do, and I mean, we've got to be a little bit inventive here, is when you go into the supermarket, and here's a couple of containers, just a couple of random containers, and we've got this little grate, this little grate that sits on the bottom. Now that's pretty cool, right? sits down the bottom, but there's really no space. So in a lot of these instances, these particular containers are either a steamer, like this one here, has another grate, doesn't have a lot of room on the bottom, or they're like leather crispers or stuff like that for your veggies. So what you can do is just grab a bit of conduit, cut up a couple of little, little feet, so you get a little bit more depth there, so you can put a little bit more substrate underneath, or you can use your perlite, the miculite, and then put your grate on top. Now the reason why we're using the grate basically is to give separation between the water, or it's a, it's a, it's a larger barrier basically, a big larger barrier, allows more air to circulate, circulate around the eggs, making sure that the eggs get even amount of temperature, which gives them a better opportunity to go the full term, because the worst thing is the egg looks great on top, underneath we're getting a big pile of mould and all sorts of horrible, horrible things eating away at the egg, it's going to destroy the egg and that's not what we want is it? Definitely not. So there's a couple of quick simple ideas and there again that just lifts the grate up, gives you a bit of room underneath, you can use water crystals, you can use any of these other substrates to get you out of trouble. That's the quickest, easiest way to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed today. I hope we learnt a little bit about incubation and how to set up an incubator box and make it really quick and simple and easy so we don't get stuck at home. Make sure you give me a like, hit me up on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Until next time, thanks for watching Critic Camp.